Welcome, this is M-Dog, and this is the YouTube channel M-Dog Gaming, entertainment channel. Primarily, we just look at a hodgepodge of different uh, video games, and today we are going to be looking at Prison Architect 2014. And let me just get things switched around a little bit here. This video is actually going to be just looking at the tutorial or introduction to this game. Uh, this game is in early access on Steam, developed by Introversion Software. Uh, and I've had my eye on this game for quite a while, but it was really in some of the earlier stages, not at a place where I felt like I wanted to jump in through the recent holiday sale and checking out some of their most recent updates felt like it was time to give this game a try so that's what we've done a little bit of introduction to this what we're going to be doing in this video though we are going to just be looking at the tutorial or the introduction if you do not want to have this spoiled for you don't watch this video you know if you want to hear my impressions of the game uh, hear me talk about the game further the place to be would probably be to look at future videos of, of that I do of this game uh, this one primarily I just want to go through the introduction of the tutorial uh, it is a very inter interesting way that they introduce the game. It's not necessarily the best tutorial for getting into some of the more advanced uh, concepts or tools that are available in the game, but it definitely gives you a flavor for some of what they're trying to accomplish and some of the potential that's there in terms of storytelling mixed with this uh, game that allows you to simulate designing your own prison. So. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what the introduction is like, this is an opportunity to do that. Uh, but again, if you want to see more of just normal gameplay and hear more about my impressions of the game, then I would encourage you to check out future videos that I do of this game. For now, let's go ahead and jump in to the introduction. This is a tough one, the CEO says. There's a prisoner incarcerated at this facility who's been convicted of a double murder and sentenced to death. That's where we come in. We've been contracted to construct an execution chamber in time for the guy's big day. This is where I want the new facility to be built. So let's just take a, a, a short pause here. and Let me just say a couple more things. Uh, the introduction actually has some very mature themes to it. If you're still watching this and interested in watching this, do, um, do heed the warning that there's some graphic pictures and even more so intense um, mature themes. So I uh, just want to throw that out there. And, and we're really just going to be walking through this this introduction. I'm not going to do a lot of talking other than just reading the conversational text. And then at the very end, uh, just sort of wrap things up and, 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 um, and be done with, with this introduction. The CEO says, the first step with any project like this is to construct the building itself with enough space inside it to fit an execution room and a holding cell. 
So let's get started. Construct a new building here. Construct a building to house the execution facility. So again, they're, they're telling a story here, uh, and it's going to be a story that really hones in on a couple of different characters. And at the same time, they're going to teach you some basics on, on playing the game. We will also need an entrance to the new execution facility. Build a large jail door into the south wall. So it's showing you where we want the wall, uh, sorry, the door, as well as where we want to build the foundation. Anytime you build a building, you start off with building the foundation. And we will go ahead and use the left mouse key, stretch that out, and show where we want that. Getting another call here. Your workmen are responsible for construction of buildings. They'll collect the steel and concrete from this storeroom and take it to the construction site. They'll use those raw materials to build the foundations and framework of your new building. This is the slowest part of construction, so you should plan ahead when building new facilities. While we wait, take a look around, use WASD or the arrow keys to move around and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So in the introduction thus far, we've had this very close view of the characters that we have seen going around working. Uh, initially, we did see a priest and a inmate during the introduction, but you can use the mouse wheel to get a much larger view and then really scroll around and see the entire, uh, entire prison facility. But let's go back down to a more personal level here and we're gonna install the large jail door where the uh, warden or the CEO instructed us to put it. All right, we have got that. And now we are literally just waiting on the workers to finish. So because I have two monitors set up, by moving the mouse all the way to the right side, instead of scrolling like it normally would, it has a tendency to go over to my second monitor. So if I go to left, top, or bottom, it does scroll. But other than that, that's why I usually just use WASD to move around instead of the mouse, because it does sort of, my second monitor interferes with that process. The CEO says, inside the building, I want a jail cell and an execution room. Partition the space by constructing some brick walls. So the first thing we're gonna do is build the brick walls where he instructed us to put them. It's very clearly marked where he wants them. And again, he's using these brick walls. We are using these brick walls to partition the room. <coughs> and now that we've done that, we can go ahead and click fast forward a little bit, which will speed up the workman. And again, they're showing us the basics of constructing, planning for, and constructing a building. And once we get this finished, it will move the story along and wrap up the introduction. Okay. Now we've done that. And CEO wants us to now add large jail doors to those dividing walls. You can rotate an object before placement by clicking the middle mouse button or press R. So we'll do the large jail door. And as you see, if we press R, it does rotate it. Same with middle mouse key. We're gonna put two in here. And the construction workers will be bringing these doors in and installing them. Again, you can fast forward up to three times speed just to get that process moving along. It's hard to see it, but there is a little progress door, a progress bar that shows you how close they are to finishing the project. That's looking good. We now need to designate rooms within those spaces. Designate a cell in the smaller area where our condemned inmate will live. Then designate the execution room itself in the larger area. So if you go to rooms, this is a important part of building and executing the running of your prison is being able to designate different rooms. Because we have this door and the brick wall partition, this is its own room that we're going to designate a cell. You see it has this exclamation triangle, and it shows that right now the thing that's keeping it from being uh, an actual cell, which you've designated it to be, is that it doesn't have a bed or a toilet. Now with the execution room, we'll designate this room up here. 
and it will now show us that we need an electric chair for this to be complete. Those new rooms have requirements before they become functional. The cell needs a bed and a toilet. The execution room requires the electric chair. So let's go to objects now. Let's get a bed, put it here where he is asking us to. Put a toilet down here. It looks kind of funny like that, so we're going to use the middle mouse button or R to rotate it around and place it just like that. Finally, we need to get an electric chair, which is up here at the top, and install it right here in the middle of the execution room. So now we'll go back to double speed. The bed is in installed, and now they should be bringing the toilet and the electric chair. And you see the prisoners right next to us while we're working on this seem to have a lot of free time right now in the yard. They're using pay phones to call their families and they're hanging out at the benches. There's plenty of guards here, but it is a little bit of a scary situation when you see that many prisoners gathered together at one time. Um, so the last thing to be installed here is a toilet. And again, in future videos, we'll get more into typical gameplay. This is a very partition part of this game. The normal game is not like the introduction at all, uh, but the introduction is very interesting. That's the essentials taken care of, the CEO says, but there's still a few improvements you could make. It's up to you though. These aren't strictly required. It depends on how much you care about your prisoners and their environment. So in the introduction, there's this introducing this idea that there are things you can do within the prison that improves the living conditions for the prisoners, but that they're not required to have a functional prison. The cell itself could be improved with an outward facing window and a small bookshelf. And the facility would look better with a higher quality floor material like wooden floorboards or mosaic tiles. Outside you could add some lighting and a paved pathway if you think it needs it. This is the man in question, Edward Romsey, a teacher once, would you believe? It's not our place to decide if he deserves this. The law has made that decision. We're just here to do a job. Once you're satisfied the facility is ready, you can begin the prisoner transfer to his new cell. Simply click on him to select him, then right click just outside his cell to initiate the transfer. So we could go ahead and do this, but Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these optional objects we can add to our brand new uh, building that we have constructed. So first, let's look in the cell. We can add an outward facing window, rotate it here, and go ahead and install it there. Also a small bookshelf could be placed here. Outside, let's look at paving stone. As you see, sort of the path doesn't necessarily connect to anything else. So we'll just go ahead and run it to the bottom of the path that runs along the perimeter of the yard. Actually, it looks like it's not going to connect there. So we have a little bit. Now the other thing he suggested was putting lights up outside here. So we will do a couple of lights. And then let's look up here. The other thing that I forgot was the flooring. So let's look at a mosaic floor. We'll create that in there and in here. And we'll leave the cell flooring the same. Now let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit close this window so we can see what's do being done. 
they continue to work on the flooring and it looks like we did not get a completion for the path so let's go ahead and pause it and this is one thing that you'll want to do a lot when you're playing a normal game and anything you start if it's paused or if they haven't started yet you can always right click it and cancel that we're going to build a path all the way through the middle of these lights here to this path. Now let's unpause it and watch the workmen finish this project. And then we'll, we, have, we will have completed all of the optional <coughs> objectives. As you see them working even at nighttime as we are in the nighttime cycle. You see they continue to work. During normal gameplay, I've noticed it seems they may work slower at night, but uh, I could be wrong on that. There are a lot of things going on, even in the tutorial, that I, I would like to talk about, but again, I think I will save those things for when we're doing more normal gameplay. Um, but you'll notice the schedule of the inmates is just sort of going on while while we're while we are playing okay so the path it just looks like is not completed there's a stack of concrete that's just sitting there so we'll dump it and for whatever reason seems to have frozen up a little bit All right, so here's our prisoner. This picture is sort of stuck here on top of this one, but that's fine. This is the priest, this is the prisoner. As he said, left click on the prisoner and then right click out here and this will initiate the transfer. At least it should. And it may be that, oh, wait, now we're moving. It may be that I had it paused there. All right, the chief is calling. Don't shed one tear for this guy. He's a stone cold killer, guilty as charged. He even confessed. Want to hear his description of what he did? It's juicy stuff. It was around 11 p.m. The lights were already on. I knew she was home. And this is again where we're getting this a little bit more mature and graphic content here. Edward said, I knew I'd catch you two here. Edward's wife, Susan. Edward, I don't. Just don't. What are you going to do? Clear as day, if you ask me. This is the chief. Deserves every volt he's gonna get. Priest, all men deserve forgiveness, even him. Are you so sure in yourself that you can deal out such final judgment? Catching your wife with another man is no excuse for what he did. And he went there with a loaded gun, knowing he'd find them together. That's double premeditated murder. He's done nothing but cooperate with the authorities 
the statement is making an example of him. If he'd committed his crime 100 miles north, he'd be looking at life imprisonment instead. How is that justice? Do you want a, a guy like this running free? I'll sleep just fine at night when I know he's gone. The CEO says good work so far. However, there is one problem. The execution room isn't functioning yet because it doesn't have any power. We need to connect it to the electric electricity supply. We are now viewing the prison in utilities mode, which shows us the electrical wiring layout for the entire prison. Each building in the prison is connected to the power grid by these thick underground electrical cables. Power is provided to the prison by this substation, which draws electricity from the national grid. As you can see, this entire wing of prison cells is without power. All the lights are out. To fix this problem, we first need to switch into utilities mode to understand why the lights are without power. So you see how far the grid is going based on cable location. It does go past the cables but only to a certain amount of distance. The nearest electrical cables are too far away. Our engineers can't complete the wiring for this area. Extend the electrical cables nearby to co cover this wing of the prison. So this is going to show you a little bit about utilities mode. You do this both with power and with water uh, when you're in normal gameplay. What we're going to do here is extend the cable out and let's kind of go up here and see. We'll go ahead and extend it out a little further because then what we'll need to do is come straight down to here and probably all the way to here. But we'll see how that looks. So now the workmen are going to come out and start spooling out the new cable. And we'll see if we uh, successfully cover all the areas by bringing the cable in such a manner. Speed them up a little bit here. All right, looks like that did it. Lights aren't the only thing that needs power. Your new electrical electric chair does too. Use the power cables to connect the ex execution facility to the new power grid. I guess we already did that. The electric chair itself is a special type of, type of electrical item. It requires its own dedicated power line. You'll need to connect it up directly with, main, with mains cables. And I think we've already done that. We are almost done, I think. We should test the new execution room at least once before we try to use it, though. Yeah, that sounds smart. I'm just going to turn it on for a few seconds, make sure everything is okay. And if you watch the power grid over here, you'll see that by connecting that much more electricity to this one grid, we've now blown everything. Well, that didn't work. Looks like we drew too much power and tripped a circuit breaker in the power station. The whole prison is dark. We're going to need more juice to be able to handle this power spike that the electric chair generates. <coughs> First, we need to turn the power back on. This is a two-step process. Step one, switch each capacitor back on by clicking them in utilities mode. Step two, switch the power station back on by clicking on it. Then build three more capacitors so we have enough power capacity to handle the electric chair. Once you've done that, test the electric chair again by clicking on it in utilities mode to turn it on. All right, so the first thing we need to do is turn this capacitor back on. And after we get all of them back on, we can turn our whole power station back on. We now have power again. And he is asking us to build three more of our capacitors. So we have queued those up to be constructed. Let's now wait until they do get put in. And you see with each one that goes in, the juice level, the draw that we have on our power station decreases. 
which just shows that we have a higher capacity. So let's go now back to utilities mode, get over to our electric chair, and let's test this thing out one more time. Switch on. It's on, things did not sh shut off. And now switch off. Oh, you know what? Let's see. I'm wondering if one of those capacitors did not, we didn't get credit for it. Uh, it looks like we did. We'll put another one in just in case. For some reason it didn't, didn't give us credit for all three capacitors. Oh, it's wanting to put us over here. So you got to pay attention here. So now we've added seven instead of three because we didn't place them exactly where they wanted, which in, in actual normal game mode would not have mattered. Here it does matter because that's what is confirming the progress and moving the introduction along. All right, so now we'll go ch test the electric chair. We've got tons of, of capacity now on our electricity. Uh, we've got to go back in utilities mode, switch it on. Well done. I believe we are finished with this job. What happens now is out of our hands. We did a professional job and that's important in our business. Try not to worry about what happens next. says, can I help you? Again, this is a flashback. Are you looking for forgiveness? I don't know. I have to do something. I can't live with the things I've done. You have to turn yourself in. Whatever you've done, you cannot evade the consequences. You will never be able to live with yourself until you face up to your past. I want to go back. I want to forgive her. I want to, her to forgive me. God will forgive you no matter what you have done, if you ask him to. But you must answer for your crimes in the eyes of the law. There is no other way. It is time, Edward. As we've moved back to current time. You have done the right thing, even though this world will not forgive you for it. You will be with God soon, and he will have the final judgment on you. You have been found guilty of two counts of murder in the first degree. The penalty is death. Do you have anything to say? Susan, I'm sorry.
Okay, that brings us to the end. The end of the introduction. Which you can replay at any time through the main menu as we did this time. So, it's really interesting. They are touching on, obviously, themes having to do with morality. Uh, there's spiritual or religious themes being touched on a little bit. Uh, political themes as well so uh, a heavy introduction and I think one of the um, one of the things that the introduction made me think of is how that especially after you've played the, the regular game a little bit is how that there is a lot of potential there there's some promise of being able to combine both the the macro and micro elements of running designing and running a prison but also bringing in some individual character stories as you play the game. And there's no reason why in future uh, updates of the game they couldn't have episodes or uh, releases or, or, or sort of markers that you would hit where they really focus in on one prisoner or a group of prisoners to tell that specific story even while the rest of your prison is going on around it. So, um, again, if you want to hear more of my impressions of the game, I'm, I'm going to share that more in, in potential future videos where we're actually looking at normal gameplay. And I'll just go ahead and leave you with, with this. A, for me, a very heavy introduction. Uh, it does an okay job at being a tutorial. Um, it, you know, it, it shows you the very basics, and it's enough to kind of get you started. Um, but I think more of what it does is highlight the potential of really telling stories, uh, and 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 hopefully the the developer of the game will be able to deliver on that further, as each prisoner um, potentially can have his own story, and there's elements of that already, but. I uh, hope, you, hope you've enjoyed, as, as always. We'll go ahead and wrap this one up, and, and do check out the other videos that are on the channel. And uh, until next time, M-Dog is now out.